Hey there, book dragons. It is time for a book review. Let's go. So I recently finished Gardens of the Moon. That is book one in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series by Steven Erickson. And I tell you what, guys, I am so glad I started this series. I've been hearing so many good things about the Malazan Book of the Fallen on YouTube. It's it, it's just been really popular with a lot of booktubers over the last year or so, and I keep telling myself I'm going to get into it, and, and I don't. So I decided this is the year that I'm going to give Malazan a try. And I should say it's the year I'm giving Malazan a try again. It was probably eight years ago, maybe somewhere around there, uh, maybe not that long, that I read Gardens of the Moon. And, and I liked it. Uh, I remember liking it, but I, I just never stuck with it. I never finished the rest of the books. I just put it down for whatever reason and didn't come back to it. And so then, you know, now that I'm on BookTube, uh, that, that was pre-BookTube, uh, so now that I'm on BookTube, I hear all of these people talking about the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start it again. So this was my reread of Gardens of the Moon. And I absolutely loved it, guys. Uh, th so the first time I just liked it, you know, it, it was okay for me. But it was a little bit confusing. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't in the right headspace when I read it before, whatever it was. But this time around, I loved it. I was just, I was just eating it up. It was a fairly quick read for me this time around, um, and and I did remember some things about the book, so that helped as well. But uh, let let's get right into it, guys. I I won't, I won't delay the process any further. I want to tell you my thoughts on Gardens of the Moon. And uh, we're, you know me, I'm a big character-driven reader. So uh, I'm going to kind of give a, a brief outline of, of, the, of the plot and the story setup. Uh, I'll talk a lot about the characters in the book because uh, that, that's my thing. And, uh, you know, I, I will keep this spoiler-free. So if you have not read Gardens of the Moon... Don't worry, I'm not going to just ruin it for you. Uh, there, there will, you know, I will talk a lot about the characters, but I'm not going to go in depth or anything like that to where to where you're going to be spoiled. And if you've already read Gardens of the Moon, if you've read the whole Malazan series, in fact, you're going to feel right at home with this video. You'll be able to smile and nod. Yeah, Chaz, I, I, I like them too. Yeah. So here we go. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start out with the plot. The majority of the book takes place on the continent of Ganabacus. It's a free continent that is under siege from the Malazan Empire. So the, the Malazan Empire is this overarching military beast that has pretty much overpowered all of the nations and the realm with the exception of a couple and it reminded me a lot of Alexander the Great and 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 people like that that just you know go through and conquer all these different countries that's the that's the exact type of military power that the Malazan Empire is previous to this a few years the emperor has died, and the empress Lucine, who is now on the throne, uh, and, and she had a different name before, I forgot, but she took the name Lucine, and she has made it her goal to conquer and rule the world from the Malazan throne. And so, uh, so that's kind of where all this takes place, and you literally get thrown right into the heat of things. Uh, you, you're 
you're in in this world where all of these battles are happening and there's all of these refugees and uh, the the battlefield is just war torn. You're thrown right into the action, and that was really cool. I I thoroughly enjoyed a world where I'm just hit with it right off the bat. Instead of having all of this build up and world building at the beginning, not that that's a bad thing, and there is good world building in this book, but it's done in such a way that you don't have any slogs that lead up to it. So I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, so, so that's where the majority of the book takes place. Uh, it also takes place in part in uh, the country of Darujistan, which is one of the last free cities standing. And of course, the Malazan Empire wants to come through and conquer Darujistan, and they've got all of these plans going forward for that. So, so it, it's really interesting. It's really chaotic, but in an orderly sort of way, if that makes sense. It's an orderly chaos, <laughs> and, and it's just so much fun. So the main players at the very beginning of the story are uh, the cadre of mages for the Malazan Empire, uh, of which two major players that I'll talk about here in a few minutes, uh, Tashrin and Tattersail, are among them. Uh, you've also got the Tis Andy, who are an ancient race of warrior sorcerers that evolved in darkness before the light came so they they're they're from the realm of dark uh you've got kaladin brood who is a a general working with the tistandi to keep the malazan forces at bay to hold them off so uh so the tistandi and kaladin brood and his warriors are are on the side of the free cities and uh, and then of course you've got the cadre mages like Tattersail and such working for the Malazan Empire. And then you've also got a military group called the Bridge Burners uh, who are led by Sergeant Whiskey Jack and they, they have some other people on their crew as well uh, like Quick Ben who is a sorcerer uh, with a very mysterious past that we do learn a tiny bit about in uh, toward the end of the book. And uh, also uh, Callum, who's an assassin. And just just some phenomenal characters here. And, and you pretty much get introduced to most of them right at the very beginning as you're thrown into this war zone, more or less. Anamanda Rake and uh, the Tis Andy are briefly seen at the beginning and then they take a bigger part later on in the story. So, uh, so yeah, so those are some of your major players. I think the characters for me are what really made it shine because you, you get so much action r right up front that you don't really have time to get a lot of meaty world building. But then you've got the characters who, who really make up for that because they are very well written and very nuanced. And then you've also got some gods at play as well. And that this is one of the cool things that I really like about this book. Um, and, and of course, I haven't read the rest of the series yet, so I don't know if the other books are as heavy on this aspect. I'm assuming they are. But uh, the gods are very actively involved in the world of the Malazan Empire, so much so that they become a nuisance uh, very often in the story. Um, they've obviously got their own agendas and their own things going on behind the scenes. Uh, so one of the major players in the book is a ascendant, uh, not necessarily a god, but an ascendant uh, which I guess I would compare more to like a, a demigod of sorts. I'm not sure. I guess you could call them a god, uh, and that would be Opon. Uh, it's a, uh, a female and male duo that play the role of chance or fate in the story. 
So, uh, you know, there are two sides of a coin. You've got, uh, you, you've got the sister and the brother, and depending on who, which one favors you, uh, determines how your luck plays out. And that Opon takes a huge role in the story. Um, I, I won't go any further because I don't want to spoil it. You've also got Shadow Throne, also known as Amanas. He is the, the king of the Shadow Realm or the lord of the Shadow Realm. Uh, so he is the, the god of, of darkness, you might say, or, or the god of chaos. And he has a whole group of, of, of demon dogs that are his pets and his pawns of terror in the human realm. Uh, so, you know, if you see this guy coming with his dogs, you obviously want to run and turn the other way. So, uh, Shadow Throne is an amazing character. I will admit the first time I read Gardens of the Moon a long time ago, I remember specifically being so confused by, by Shadow Throne for, for whatever reason, I don't understand. Now having read it again, why well, I was confused, but, uh, I was, and so I understood it better this time around, and maybe that was the benefit of reading the book again. So, uh, excellent, excellent character. Uh, there is also uh, the Rope, also known as Cotillion. He is a servant of Shadow Throne, and uh, they they kind of work together, although it's it's very obvious that, that Shadow Throne is the one who's in power and... Uh, and Cotillion serves him. So, uh, just so some fascinating gods uh, come into the mix. There's a few others I won't I won't go into a whole lot here, but uh, just uh, there's a lot of political maneuvering and power maneuvering in this story. Uh, the the gods obviously have their own agendas that play out in the book, and it, it's just a wild, wild ride, guys. So I mentioned Tattersail before. She is probably one of my favorite characters. Uh, she is one of the mages working for the Malazan Empire uh, to further their cause, and uh, she is a pretty fascinating character. She goes through a metamorphosis at one point in the story. I won't go into that, but it really puts a different twist on her character. Uh, and, and at the end of the book, we still don't know exactly what's happening with her. But I, I'm just really, really enjoying Tattersail's character. Uh, Tatrin is the highest ranking sorcerer. He works together with Dujik One Arm, who is a military commander uh, for the Malazan forces, and Tashrin obviously has his own agenda behind the scenes as well, and that starts to play out early on in the story. And then you've got a few other mages as well in their group. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the Bridge Burners. We talked about them. Uh, one of my favorite bridge burners is Quick Ben. You, you can probably tell I like the sorcerers. But uh, Quick Ben's magic is really something unique and interesting um, to see the way he uses it and to find out more of his backstory. That, that was really, really good. One of the major characters that you follow throughout the book is uh, Captain Perrin. And uh, he, he, we see him very early on when he's just getting his first command. And then you follow him kind of throughout the story at different points as he plays a very key role in the story. And he ends up becoming kind of a double agent of sorts. So Captain Perrin is quite the fascinating character. Not my favorite character in the story, but I think I'm going to grow to like him more... Uh, if he turns up in other books, which I'm, I'm probably, I'm kind of assuming he might. I'm not sure. So, so more, more to come on that. One of the most interesting characters that I think I ran across, other than Anamanda Rake, and I'm going to talk about him in a minute, um, and, and that would be Sari. Um, and that, that's not her original name, her, her given name. 
but early on in the story, something happens to her, and she is given the name Sari. And uh, it j just like it sounds, S-O-R-R-Y. And she is a, a brutal and ruthless character for a 17-year-old girl. She's actually very powerful. And there's a reason that she's so powerful. And I won't go into details, but she is a pawn. And we'll leave it at that because you need to read the story to find out more about Sari. She is a fascinating character. Some other characters that play a more minor role in the story are the Talani Mas, who are an ancient race of humanoid characters who are now undead. They're, they're, they're basically the walking dead, but they're not your typical zombies per se because they can actually reason and think for themselves, even though they are kind of a hive mind of sorts. There are some Talani Moss that are more intelligent than others. And so uh, they, they, they serve the kingdom, but they, they have a major role to play individually as well, or, or at least some of the Talani Moss do. And there, then there is also this main bad guy in the story uh, called the, the Jagged Tyrant. And the Jagged Tyrant is one of the things that the Malazan Empire is trying to resurrect to use for their own purposes. I'll leave it at that. I won't go any further with it, but the Jagged Tyrant is actually a pretty cool character. Just, uh, and super powerful. I mean, goodness. Uh, there are only a few characters in the book that can probably defeat him. But, you know, we'll, we'll leave it at that. There are a couple of other characters in the story that are, are really pretty cool. Uh, they're kind of more minor characters, but they mainly feature in the sections on Darujistan. And that would be Rowlet Nam, who is an assassin, and Crocus, who is a thief. Uh, and they, they, they have some really interesting story arcs, uh, albeit more minor in the story, but their arcs are pretty cool. So uh, I really enjoyed them. As I've briefly mentioned before, out of all the characters in this story, my favorite is Anamander Rake. By far, he is my absolute favorite character in the story. He rules from a floating mountain called Moon Spawn. And he is the Lord of Moon Spawn and the ruler of the Tist Andy Warriors. He has deep, dark, rich black skin and an absolutely pure white hair. And he's got this really badass sword. And when he tells people the name of the sword, they just, you know, people instantly are like afraid. They're, you know, they, they've heard the stories, they've heard what it does. His sword is basically like the gates of hell or or this unending purgatory that it you know if you get slain with his sword, you end up in this weird in between universe, toiling and being tortured for the rest of your never ending existence. It's it's just mind blowing. This the the power that this sword has and the awe ah, that and Amanda Rake inspires. It's just, well, it, it's just fantastic. So, um, I, you know, I, and I'll, I'll put a picture up here so you can get an idea of what Anna Amanda Rake looks like. But man, it is just, he's such a fascinating character. Just absolutely loved it. So, um, your 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 main plot is just all of these characters each playing their roles in the advancement of either the conquest of the Malazan Empire or the rebellion against the Malazan Empire and Anamanda Rake and the Tist Andy Warriors are typically more neutral but in this particular instance, they've chosen to fight on the side of the rebellion against the Malazan Empire. So, just, 
it, it's it's a fascinating look into these characters and their lives and what happens as the war machine which is the Malazan Empire rages on. It, it's just a fascinating look. Now, the magic system, I think, is one of the coolest that I have seen in a book. It, it's extremely unique. There are these pockets of power that are called warrens, and uh, every mage has access to certain warrens. Uh, there's about seven or eight main different warrens of power. Uh, they each have a name and they are accessed by different mages in the story. Tattersail has her warren. Most of the mages in the story also have their warrens that they can access. And basically a warren is, it's like a, I, I would almost compare it to a Mary Poppins purse. If you get my meaning, if you've seen Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins can pull anything out of her, out of her bag, right? Uh, and the same is true for the most part of these warrens in the story. Uh, not only can you use the warrens to gather the power that you need to cast your magic spells, but you can also use the warrens to travel to different places in in the realm that you need to access. So it, it's kind of it's kind of almost like teleportation, but uh, you can also do other things by accessing the power within within these warrens. So uh, some mages are able to access more power than others, and different warrens provide different abilities uh, depending on who's using them. And, uh, and there is a, a very different and unique warren that is discovered early on in the story that isn't really on any of the record books, but, but somehow one of the mages has gained access to it and is using it to cause all sorts of different bad and crazy things. So it, it's, just, it's just a wild ride, guys. I've rambled on and on. I've probably not made a lot of sense of this story, but if you have not read Gardens of the Moon, you at least need to give it a try. Even if you decide it's not for you, give it a try. I highly recommend it. I will be continuing on with the series. Uh, at least I'm going to read Dead House Gates next month, and we'll see where I go from there. It's only a 10 book series, so it's not that long, and I'm hooked. This is a fascinating, fascinating read, and I really think that you should read it. If, if you like military fantasy, you will probably like this. If you like epic fantasy, if you like sword and sorcery, if you like things like that, you will likely enjoy this story. If you are a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, if you played Dungeons and Dragons before, or something similar, you will likely enjoy this because the Malazan Book of the Fallen was based on a role-playing game campaign that Steven Erickson and his friend in Esselmont created. So that, that's where it all came from, guys. So if you like stuff like that, you will likely enjoy this book. Uh, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Have you read Gardens of the Moon? Have you read the Malazan series in its entirety, maybe? Let me know. Uh, if you've not, uh, and you maybe, maybe you want to know more, let me know in the comments. I'd love to dialogue with you. Let's discuss it. As always, I will put a spoiler thread in the description so that uh, we can talk all the spoilers that, that we want to and keep the spoilers out of all the, all the regular comments. So I will pin a comment where we can talk spoilers for that. And uh, that's it, guys. Make sure that you are reading more books. I'll talk to you next time.